Joining me now is the bull himself, John McDessey. John, I appreciate the time. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. Good, good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, first things first, you made your UFC debut in 2010, the year I began covering the sport of mixed martial arts, GSP versus Josh Koscheck 2. Take me back to that moment. Um, I've been, uh, I've been uh, a part of many crazy cards, you know, so... Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been in the undercard of George St. Pierre. Everybody knows me coming from Montreal, Canada. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it is what it is, you know? So I've been, I've been down the, the roller coaster ride for a long time. 11 years later, 17 fights uh, later, fighting in the octagon, do you kind of get like the same uh, feeling that you, get, that you got like during your debut fight, like that nerves, uh, anxiety? Do you get any of that still? Always, always. Every... I've been competing since the age of six, and I still feel that same tension, that same type of anxiety. Like, I don't want to say anxiety. It's just more like, uh, you know, nerves, butterflies, the usual stuff before a big day coming up. What do you do to kind of combat those nerves? Well, as funny you said, I'm, I'm 35, you know, so anyone, anyone that follows me on my social media knows that I'm a, I'm a man of wisdom. I like um, uh, I got attracted to philosophy. Yeah. Uh, it helps me calm the mind. I love personal growth. It, uh, it makes me feel that, uh, you know, spiritually and, and, and um, mentally, I needed to work on myself because, you know, growing up, a lot of testosterone in, in sports and fighting, you kind of have the, the egos runs wild, you know what I mean? But when I get older, I, I, I wanted to be more, I wanted to focus on personal growth and, um, I'm a big fan of Stoicism. I don't know if you ever heard of Stoicism. Mm -hmm. I follow Stoicism uh, re religiously. Good, good. Well, it seems to be working out for you uh, very well. So over a decade later, how has MMA changed? I always love asking veterans of the sport uh, this question. How has MMA changed? Or better yet, is there anything you miss from 2010 mixed martial arts to 2021 mixed martial arts? Well, I'm very fortunate. Uh, I've seen a big transition from owner's perspective, like being in the UFC since 2010, um, uh, much bigger now. There are a lot of employees, a lot of changes. So, yeah, it's been an interesting ride for sure. Um, changes, I mean, a lot of, it's very, there's 600 rosters, uh, 600 fighters versus 200 or 300, 400. So many fighters, it's a, the, 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 the sport is growing. So, I'm happy that to see the sport growing. It's still a very young sport compared to other combative sports. Where do you see, being that it is still a young sport, but MMA, UFC, it really seems to be evolving so much. Where do you see it heading? Do you, do you see anything, uh, you know, big changes coming in the near future? Or what would you like to see? Well, I mean, in my opinion, UFC, uh, mixed martial arts, is the ultimate sport, you know, uh, it's like back in the back in the Roman times where they had the gladiators, you know, uh, competing in arenas. You know, it's it's uh, styles versus styles. Uh, you know, you have now now with the, the big names like moving up weight classes. Um, there's it's honestly, I feel like it's uh, the sky is the limit. Uh, people are evolving not only physically but mentally. The sport is more mature. And you're going to see great things happening. You know, I, I've been witnessing, like, the last event, you know, these this guys, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Like, it's crazy what's happening with the sport. You know what I mean? It's coming. It's kind of funny, and it's not funny. You know what I mean? You, you got so many different – it's so diverse, so unpredictable. And that's what people love, the, the unpredictability of the, the sport. Mm. At the end of the day, I know so many people dislike Jake Paul – I personally don't like his personality. However, more eyes on the sport. That's kind of the impression I'm kind of under. It's more eyes on boxing and mixed martial arts. And to me, I feel like that's really a great thing. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you got to always look at the, the, the silver lining, right? Always look at the, You always got to take a negative and turn it into a positive. So, for sure. Man, you want to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to motivate myself every day. So, why not? <laughs> Absolutely. April 10th, UFC on ABC2. How did it feel to get back in the cage, get a great win over a really, really top and tough prospect? I mean, yeah, uh, there were so many factors, you know, coming off an ACL recovery. I, had, I tore my ACL, my last fight in Brazil, 
getting, you know, judge, you know, it's very tough with the judging and decisions and finding a, a good trainer. Many things in my personal life was a struggle for me, you know, but I, w I went into the fight, uh, ACL recovery. I had a shoulder injury. I had a knee injury. So, I mean, I fought this dude with uh, just a jab and a left kick. Uh, so it was a good, um, I, I was happy. I dominated the fight. I don't know about the split decision part, but anyways, but besides the fact that uh, it was a hype kid, I was surprised you were hyping him up because he never fought someone my caliber. No, no. I mean, he absolutely didn't. I think they were hyping him up because of the, the, you know, obviously social media and also like the upkick knock on the contender series. It's one of those viral, you know, knockouts, you know? Yeah, but I had, I had so many knockouts. But this is the game, right? It's you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You're going to get knocked out or you're going to give knockouts. Hopefully, you're going to knock out more than you're going to get knocked out. 100%. What do you believe you proved in that fight? Obviously, you proved a lot being that you were really injured coming into the fight and yet you still were able to dominate. What did you prove? Well, for me, I was ready to die. Um, I wanted to prove to myself that's the most important prove that I still got what it takes and I'm still hungry. Um, having the right mindset, having the right attitude, you know, that John DeBoe McDessie, I'm still like, very aggressive and I'm still entertaining. And I did it on purpose to stay in the pocket the whole fight. And that was the fight that I took the most damage because anyone that knows me, I like to make the guy miss. I played, I'm very defensive. I don't get touched a lot in any of my fights. But in this fight, I had to make a statement. I was very surprised to see that because you're a very technically sound uh, fighter. You, I, one of my favorite parts about you is watching how, well, how accurate you are, but at the same time, dodging all this stuff. So I was very uh, impressed, but I was very surprised to see that. I now understand why. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's the thing, right? I had to take the risk. And I also kind of um, I adopted a Mexican style. You know, I'm a big fan of Canelo Alvarez, you know. Um, but it's not the same thing when you have a small glove versus big gloves. Big gloves, you can put your hand up and kind of get the shot. But with the MMA gloves, the, the punches can still go through. Yeah. To yourself, I mean, obviously me as a spectator, you prove that you undoubtedly still have it and you're still a contender. Did you prove that to yourself looking back at this fight? I mean, listen, I'm the, I'm, I am my, my worst critic. You know, I'm always like any fighter, any athlete, any, any artist, any artist in general will tell you that they can always improve. And, you know, but I wanted to prove that I'm, I'm well-rounded. I wanted to prove that uh, I was able to beat up the bigger guy because many times people keep on questioning my weight class. You know, John, you should fight 145. I mean, yes, would I had a better chances of having a successful career at 145? Maybe, possibly, but this is the life I chose, and I believe my, my fate is up to God, you know? So I let, uh, I let my fate leave it up to, to the gods, and uh, I just, I like to fight bigger guys. I, I want to be known in my legacy when I die that I, st I stood in front of giants and I was never scared of them. <laughs> Absolutely. At the end of the day, you have had a very successful career, and it's exciting knowing that the best is yet to come. I know you're your toughest critic, but... How many fighters, uh, past or present, can say that they've been in the UFC for 11 years, had 18 fights with organization? I mean, that's absurd, man. Yeah, I never really think about it when I sit down. I don't. I, don't, I try not. I don't like. I don't let. I don't let my ego get too inflamed. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been in the UFC. I'm a Canadian. I don't even think. Uh, I don't think any Canadian from that generation is still in the UFC. Most yeah. of them got cut. Most of them got cut. Yeah, yeah, that is very true. Now, in this fight, you broke your uh, foot in the first round. Uh, I know a lot of it is obviously adrenaline, but uh, how in the world do you, <laughs> do you go for another two rounds? Like, I broke this pinky in PE class, and I fainted. Like, I was done. <laughs> how in the, <laughs> how in the world? I mean, you broke your foot in the first round. How does that happen? Honestly, man, it's, uh, it's a crazy world we live in. I mean, look what happened to Chris Weidman. I feel bad for him. That's a horrible, that's like one of the most scariest things. That, like as a fighter, as fighters, we don't really talk about this stuff. It's like taboo. We, that's the thing that we're always crossed, that crosses our mind. Like we get these nasty injuries, you know, and that's like one of the things where 
my whole life of c competing, amateur, forget about professional, like just an, uh, as an amateur. I would never go into, uh, you know, I never broke a bone. I never, like, I've been kicking my whole life, man. This is the first time I actually broke, uh, I, I broke a bone while throwing a, uh, throwing a kick. So it was, uh, yes, 100%. I give it to, you know, the adrenaline helped me a lot. And also it was my mindset. I was able to block it off. It was very discomfort and I had to block it off. I know you just had a surgery. Did that surgery go all right? Everything okay? Yes, yes. Uh, I just, I went, I, I undergone a surgery uh, right away. So that was good. Hopefully it's healing good. I mean, I can't really know because it's covered in a cast, but I'm going to go see the doctor tomorrow soon. So, you know, not the first surgery. It won't be the last surgery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, hurt business. I know you've been injured a whole lot uh, recently, but while recovering, is there anything you kind of do while you're just kind of like relaxing? Is there anything you kind of like doing, watching TV, playing board games? What do you do to keep your, you know, yourself preoccupied while you're healing? I mean, well, right now well, I got I got multiple things on the on the sideline. Uh, back at home, I have a uh, bull nutrition. I've been, I teamed up with some guys back in Canada. I'm working on bull nutrition. I'm working also on my own uh, casual wear called bull wear. You can see on my Instagram. Uh, everything is starting from scratch. I've been, I, I love entrepreneurship. I want to motivate, inspire people. So I like motivational stuff, I like to motivate people. And um, I'm always writing my journal. And I'm just, I always stay active. Even with a broken foot, I'm still training. I'm still uh, working on my, my physique. I'm always trying to grow, and and uh, I've been also watching, uh, you know, the fights and staying relative and seeing what's happening in the sport. So yeah, man, I just stay busy. You do have a uh, bull nutrition, a lot of things going on outside of the cage. Uh, but what are your your upcoming plans, your goals? Do you have like a specific timetable of when you uh, would ideally like to step back in the cage? Yeah, so physically, I'm not able to train the way I want to train. So. I'm, all, I'm a big fan of nutrition. Uh, I studied at a great mentor for six years, so I, I stay active. My, I love cooking, so I'm very active in the kitchen. Uh, I'm always keeping my body well-maintained through nutritional meals, organic. I'm a big fan of organic. Um, I also co personally coach people, but once my foot is healed, uh, I want to get back in there as soon as possible, and uh, that's why I stay disciplined, so I'm able to heal quicker. You want to go on a uh, cooking show. You want to go on a cooking show with Gordon Ramsay. And if he ever has, if he ever yelled at you or anything, all you got to do is just kick him in the mouth. I, I would never be able to uh, work with this guy because if, if, God forbid, he, he, he steps out of the line, I'll smack him. <laughs> I feel like that would be such a great pay-per-view matchup right there. Yeah, Ramsay and the bull. It's not, it's not a good combination in the kitchen. <laughs> John, thank you so much for the time. I do uh, very much appreciate it. I'm going to leave the floor to you. If there's anybody you'd like to thank for this past victory of yours, and how can people find your website, social media, all that? Yeah, man. Well, first, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I want to thank the, the loyal fans who have been always supportive, continuous, showing me continuous love. Uh, my team, uh, Javier Torres, UKF Gym, uh, back at home in Canada, my family, my friends, uh, my, um, and you can always follow me on social media. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at John McDessie. Uh, go check out my bullwear. It's nice designs. Uh, you know, uh, support, support, uh, you know, support my, my brand and uh, stay tuned for my, for my next fight.